I've got nine tips for uh, mountaineers in general. They are fresh from Mont Blanc. I've just got back. By the way, I do want to make a video specifically about that, that mountain and what happened, but I will. I'm just trying to figure out which elements of the story I want to share because some shit went down. Hi guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new here, this is all about mountaineering, mountain sports and getting as fit and as prepared as possible. So in this channel, I share tips just like this one that I'm going to be sharing with you in this video. So this first tip is probably the most important. In fact, it's really the first thing you want to do immediately after you've booked the trip and that's get mountaineering specific travel insurance. Your average travel insurance is not going to cover you from rolling an ankle and getting stranded on a mountain. If you roll an ankle and have a simple injury like that, you need helicopter rescue. It's basically impossible to get people off mountains unless they can walk. So you need to get mountaineering insurance that actually covers helicopter rescue. This happened on my most recent trip to Mont Blanc. It cost 3,000 euro to get the helicopter off the mountain. Luckily, he had insurance. So number one tip is to get good insurance with a good track record of pulling people off the mountains. The second tip, especially for Mont Blanc, is to choose your route wisely. There is probably a dozen commonly climbed routes on Mont Blanc. Uh, the normal route or the Guta, Guta? Guta route gets most of the traffic. We decided to climb from the Italian side and then down to the French side. So weather and glacial activity can really affect your success on this summit. A lot of people who come from international areas, they give themselves four or five days to climb Mont Blanc. It's just not enough to give you a decent weather window. And that happens with a lot of 14ers as well. People try and get it done in like a long weekend. If you're gonna spend the time and the money and do all the training and the preparation to go and climb a mountain, why not give yourself an extra three days to have that weather window? We did that and we absolutely needed it. There's, there's no way that we would have been able to climb Mont Blanc in four days because we had a lot of rain. But because we left ourselves that window, we were able to get to the summit. Tip number three is about learning and practicing crampon technique. Even if you live in the desert, you don't have mountains nearby, you can research different crampon techniques. You can learn the French technique, the American technique, you can practice putting your crampons on your boots, taking them off again and just getting to know uh, that piece of equipment and understanding fully how they use. A lot of the times I see many people out in the mountains and it's clear that it's their first time mountaineering or maybe it's not, but they just don't know how to walk in crampons properly. They've got like duck feet, they're stretching their calves, they're putting way too much energy into using crampons. So get practice if you can walking around on snow and ice if it's possible. But it, if not, there's a couple of really good books like The Freedom of the Hills that I learned when I was living in Australia how to use crampons just from reading. And doing a little bit of pre preparation like that beforehand can make a big difference. Tip number four is to take a buff or some sort of neck scarf to protect you from the wind. When we were on Mont Blanc, the wind was incredible, a really, really strong wind, and I started to feel like I was getting uh, wind burn on my cheek, and having the buff to be able to pull it up over my face really made a massive difference to how comfortable I was feeling, and they're like less than 20 bucks. This is a tip that I tell everybody, whether they're going trekking or mountaineering, it's so important to use one of these things because uh, not only can it help moisturize your breath, which helps with the dry air and altitude, but just covering your face when it's really cold, it does make you feel kind of more cozy and a lot more comfortable. So get a buff. Tip number five is to bring proper sun protection. So good sunscreen that's really strong, like 50 plus, you need zinc and excellent sunglasses. I would say minimum category three, that's what I used, but the gold standard is Cat 4. So if you, when you're looking at sunglasses, you want to get a really, really dark lens to uh, protect you from the incredible brightness once the sun comes up. When you're walking around on snow and ice, that is a deal breaker. If, if you've forgotten your sunglasses, the trip is over. You can get away with a lot of things, but if you're on a glacier on a high mountain surrounded by snow, you're not going anywhere without sunglasses. You could be blind in less than an hour. Tip number six is take a hot thermos with either ginger lemon tea or something you like. I took coffee, but it doesn't have to be coffee. Anything that'll 
uh, give you a little boost at three o'clock in the morning when the sun hasn't come up and you are really suffering from the cold having a hot drink is something that you know it does weigh a little bit but carry that thermos with a hot drink it'll make yourself and everyone around you feel so much better when you share that that is uh, an incredible tip that I don't really see a lot of people doing I love having a hot drink on the mountain that's just me number seven take plenty of high energy snacks uh, hydration supplements to keep you going Mont Blanc especially is an incredibly long day most people will spend sort of 16 18 maybe even 20 hours on the mountain you depart at uh, 1 a.m. or 12 midnight usually and you could be going until 6 o'clock the following day so you're gonna need to continually fuel your body yes there is refugios along the way where you can have a big meal but when I'm active I don't really want to have a big meal I'm better off having you know like uh, a muesli bar maybe it's got some protein in it to keep me going your hydration supplements are incredibly important because it does get hot once the Sun comes up remember you're in Europe uh, in the middle of summer and it does get hot once the Sun comes up so you're gonna be sweating this kind of activity is the equivalent or more to a marathon so you're gonna be constantly uh, drinking a little bit at a time just like you would in a marathon tip number eight is to spend as much time at altitude as you can beforehand for Mont Blanc this is uh, 15,000 feet or 4,810 meters to be exact. We spent a weekend in the Pyrenees here in Spain, the weekend beforehand at around 3,000 meters or 9,000 feet. We actually spent the following two days before going to Mont Blanc at around 3,000 meters. So we really put the nail in the coffin in terms of altitude. We knew that it just wasn't going to affect us because we'd spent a total of sort of four or five days at 3,000 meters and that really eliminated any problems we were likely to have with altitude. So if you're coming from the other side of the world to climb a big mountain, why not give yourself an extra few days to acclimatize? And uh, the same goes with the weather window in uh, tip number two, I think it was. Tip number nine is to bring lightweight runners. Not Mont Blanc is a huge mountain but it's not all covered in snow you won't be continually uh, needing to use mountaineering boots which are heavy they're cumbersome they're awkward and they can become uh, very uncomfortable by the end of the day so what I did is I took my uh, trail runners up with me in the pack and once we descended past the snow line I put my mountaineering boots in my backpack that is uh, reducing a whole lot of weight from my feet and then I put my lightweight trail runners on and I can cruise the rest of the mountain unhindered by the boots. So that is a huge tip when it comes to mountaineering. I'm pretty much always taking a really light pair of trail runners, both for the approach and the last part of the descent. My final bonus tip that I'm gonna throw in is, and you guys know that I love trekking poles, take trekking poles with you. Yes, you've got probably a long, straight, basic mountaineering axe, but when the terrain isn't so steep, a basic mountaineering axe, you kind of have to hunch it over to put it into the snow to help support you. On the more flat sections, and there's a few on Mont Blanc and similar mountains like this, it's so handy to have trekking poles to help with your propulsion, to help with your balance, to keep you upright, to keep you breathing steadily and to put you in a rhythm. I'm a massive fan of trekking poles. You guys have probably seen my video on how to use trekking poles. I'm going to be redoing that soon. but. I mean, they weigh almost nothing and they're so, so useful when you learn how to use them. So, take hiking poles with you. Now, you might have noticed that I didn't cover any tips to do with fitness and that's really a lot of what this channel is about. So, where's all the fitness tips? Okay, well, I'm going to be putting all of my fitness-related tips into my Mont Blanc training program, which I'm going to release in a couple of weeks. I'm just putting the final touches on it now. I will post a video up here all about that program so you can learn about uh, exactly what I did to prepare myself for Mont Blanc. Yes, we did get to the summit. Yes, I felt absolutely fine. This really felt like a fun, easy trip for me. I didn't really suffer at any point, not uh, physically anyway. <laughs> it's a long story. I'll tell you the story of Mont Blanc in another video coming uh, very soon, but thanks for watching guys. I hope you learned something. I'll see you on the summit.